So when it comes to the war in Ukraine, there are two kinds of weapons we've seen deployed. To begin with, there's obviously the guns and the missiles that have destroyed Ukrainian cities and left thousands dead since Russia's invasion on February 24th. Earlier this week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Kyiv. They told Zelensky and his aides the United States would provide more than $300 million worth of new military aid. Austin spoke about needing to continue arming Ukraine in their fight against Russia. They believe that we can win. We believe that they, we can win, they can win if they have the right uh, equipment, the right support. And we're going to do everything we can, continue to do everything we can, to ensure that that gets there. But the other major weapon in this war is focused more on the strength of the financial sword, the economics. Last week, as part of its latest round of sa sanctions on Moscow, the United States imposed new sanctions on dozens of people and entities in Russia, including the Russian billionaire Konstantin Malafev. The United States accuses him of being one of the main sources of financing for Russians promoting separatism in Crimea. He's one of many Russian oligarchs who the United States and its allies have targeted as part of their effort to punish the biggest players in the Russian economy, players who've either been helping finance this brutal war or those who've benefited directly from Vladimir Putin's time in office. One of the ways the U.S. has been able to sanction Russians in the past has been through the Magnitsky Act, which was named after Sergei Magnitsky, a Russian tax advisor who was imprisoned in 2008 and allegedly tortured for investigating government corruption. He died in custody in 2009. The legislation, which was passed in 2012, allows the United States government to punish foreigners who are found to be committing human rights abuses. In 2013, the Obama administration made public a list of 18 individuals affected by the act. But how effective can sanctions be against these billionaire Russian oligarchs? Well, Bill Browder knows. He's an American-born British hedge fund manager who went from being one of the largest investors in Russia to being one of the country's most wanted, ultimately lobbying the Congress to pass the Magnitsky Act. He's out with his second book, Freezing Order, a true story of money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. When it comes to sanctions, he writes... For every person or organization that has been sanctioned, there are thousands of human rights violators and kleptocrats who are waiting in terror to see if they will be sanctioned next. There is no question that the Magnitsky Act has altered behavior and been a deterrent for would-be murderers and thieves. Joining me now to discuss his new book and everything you would want to know about Russian oligarchs is Sergei Magnitsky's old boss, Bill Browder. He was once Russia's biggest foreign investor, but was expelled from Moscow by Vladimir Putin in 2005. Bill, thanks for being here. I want to start out with asking for your opinion. How successful do you think the economic sanctions against Russia have been so far? I think that the um, sanctions so far have been wide-ranging, punishing, and uh, devastating for certain oligarchs, but I think the program is incomplete. If you look at the total number of oligarchs, um, and I, when I say oligarchs, I mean billionaires who have been sanctioned in Russia, the total number is about 35. And, and that doesn't include, some of these people are on the US list and not on the UK list and on the EU list and not on the US list and so on, but 35 billionaires from Russia have been sanctioned. And in my opinion, in order to get at all of Vladimir Putin's wealth, we have to go after all of the oligarchs. And there's about 118 people on the list. And so I think this is an in-process situation. I think more people need to be sanctioned. And I think if we do sanction all of the oligarchs, then effectively what we've done is cut Putin off from his foreign source of capital. And that's a very important part of degrading his ability to fight this war in Ukraine. Bill, I guess my follow-up question to you, though, then, is there a difference between somebody who's deemed to be an oligarch or a billionaire? Is there a term of art involved with the word oligarch? And how would you actually make that list if you are one of those billionaires in Russia to be able to be sanctioned by the United States government? Well, essentially, anybody who has that type of money in Russia can't be a billionaire, can't be an oligarch unless Vladimir Putin has given them permission. Ah, okay. And so, so it's basically, it's, it's unlike any other place in the world. Um, you're not independently wealthy. You're dependently wealthy, and you're dependent on Vladimir Putin. 
And and what, what do you have to do to get that permission? You've got to share half your money with Vladimir Putin. And then when he calls you up and asks you to do something in the West, wherever, with your money, um, that is your duty to follow through. And if you don't, then he'll strip the money from you and put you in jail, or even worse, he'll kill you. And so these oligarchs are all, you know, they, they thump their chests like alpha males, uh, the old, u- uber alpha males um, when they're on their own. But when they're in a room with Vladimir Putin, they look like the most subordinate little school children, all desperately afraid of, of, of what he's going to do to them. And so how, how do you determine who's an oligarch? Very simple. Anybody, uh, you ask any of these people to publicly say, is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? Um, has he lost, launched a murderous invasion? If they were to answer that question affirmatively on the record, then they're not an oligarch dependent on Vladimir Putin. Almost every one of these people, when you ask them to criticize Vladimir Putin, they will not do it. But Bill, do you think these types of sanctions are a little too little too late? I mean, we saw what Putin did in 2014 when he annexed Crimea. The sanctions imposed then were nowhere near what we're seeing now. Do you think there was a lost opportunity back then in 2014 to curb Moscow and Putin especially? Absolutely. The, the, mm. This always been too little too late. We, we've had a situation where for the last 22 years, Putin has got, gotten away with murder, literally mass murder, and we've never done anything, or if we've done something, it's always been uh, totally not not appropriate and, and up to par with, with the scale of the crime. He invaded uh, uh, Georgia in 2008, and um, we urged all sides to, to uh, restrain themselves. In 2014, uh, he invaded Crimea, and, and um, a bunch of nobodies were put on the sanctions list. Um, he 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 poisoned people in in uh, using the chemical banned chemical nerve agent in Salisbury, England, and uh, uh, Britain. British people are all going to the World Cup six months later. He, he's been given a free pass for the last 22 years, and as a result, he's been empowered and emboldened to do these terrible things now. And and um, the sanctions at this point are not going to dissuade him from doing anything. What we have to use these sanctions for is to cut him off from his financial resources so he doesn't have the money to do anything. And that's the point at at this stage of the game. So as you note in your latest book, Freezing Order, another important voice calling for Magnitsky sanctions was Vladimir Karamurza. Vladimir is someone you call a close friend, Bill, and you write a chapter about his poisoning. Well, he was arrested last week in Moscow and charged with spreading false information. He's currently serving a 15-day detention for allegedly evading the police. Have you been able to be in touch with him at all since the Russians have invaded uh, Ukraine? And are you worried about his safety? Uh, I'm terrified for Vladimir. So Vladimir and I are close friends. He's my closest ally in, in, in getting the Magnitsky Act passed. He was in London, where I live and we had dinner shortly before he went to Moscow, and he told me he was going to Moscow, and I begged him not to go. I said that they'll kill you if you go back to Moscow. They'd already tried killing him twice. And he, he, he's such a brave patriot. He said that he's a politician asking the Russian people to stand up to Vladimir Putin. How can he possibly ask them that if he's afraid to go to his own country? He went to Russia. Um, he, came, he, he went on MSNBC and CNN, called Vladimir Putin a killer, and an hour afterwards, um, he was arrested. And, and now they're charging him with this new crime of basically the, the crime of calling the war a war. Um, and, and it's not 15 days in prison, it's 15 years in prison if he's found guilty. And, and surely he's going to be the poster child of this new terrible law that they've, they've come up with. And um, he's now in the custody of the people who tried to kill him. And I'm, I'm very worried for his, his safety and his security.